Hey guys, Matt from Single Tracks here. Out on the new Gorilla Gravity Nirvana right now. They're all new, big brawler bike. It's 29er, 160 millimeters in the rear, with a 170 fork up front. It's a big one, it's even out doing the smash. So Gorilla Gravity got this, basically it's a the maximum amount of travel they can squeeze into this wheel size with their linkage and frame platform right now. So they've removed the other suspension options that they have. Kind of similar to crush mode, which is what you have on other real gravity models. And that's a little bit softer mid stroke, uh, more active top stroke. A little bit more sensitive and still pretty solid ramp up and so no switching suspension modes on here um, you still get a geometry adjust headset so I don't have the numbers yet but it seems like it would be about the same 10 millimeter difference if you're swapping the position of the headset and it still uses there's the same same front triangle, but well, on chain stays as the other Gorilla Gravity models. So last week I had this bike as a The Smash, if I'm saying that right. So the front triangle is the same one I had on the Smash. So they switched the shock, the fork, and the seat stay. Now it's a Nirvana. So it's a 20 millimeter bump in travel for the front. So get from a 150 fork on the Smash to 170 on the Nirvana. 145 in the rear on the Smash, 160 in the rear on the Nirvana. But for now, I just finished a uh, big climb at Belcher Hill. Anyone watching that's familiar with Front Range, Colorado, knows where I am. It's that Belcher Hill is just a steep, chunky, uh, really, really loose climb. So you can notice a few things on the on the Nirvana. Um, you know, you get a pretty supportive mid-stroke, it's not, it's not going to create the most firm pedaling platform for you uh, compared to some other bikes. If you hit this against the Firebird or even the Slayer, it feels a little bit more firm on those other two. And it's not to say this is a bad climber, it's just going to be a little bit more active. You're going to get into that mid-stroke a little bit more. The seat angle doesn't feel as steep as others. So it's kind of on the nose of the saddle for a lot of the climb. Maybe that might be because it's sinking into the travel a little bit more than, than other bikes in this category. Again, in some parts on white range, it's not a bad thing just because you need the traction there. So, on quarantine, just stay close to home, not cracking the throttle wide open. And you could see the monster going downhill right now. Alright, get this thing up to speed a little bit. Not too much. Stroke does feel super flush on some of these harder drops. Handling 
handling is really predictable. It's smooth. It doesn't feel too slow. Really nice and controlled through here. Yeah, that really just didn't hold a hold the candle to what Nirvana feels capable of right now. You know, on climbs like this where it's pretty moderate, it feels fine. It's just when you get into that steeper territory, there's a little bit more leverage on the suspension. You feel a little bit lean back. Then you get on super rocky stuff. So you have to climb and get over. Not a bad thing because it's still getting really good traction out of here. Super smooth, super plush on these drops. A lot of low end traction around the bumpy stuff. maneuverable around the really tight switchbacks also. Yeah, so on climbs like this, I've, I've been finding myself just reaching for that middle damp position in the rear shock just to minimize the bob a little bit when outstanding traction isn't needed and you still get decent traction on this middle position but it's just a bit firmer than wide open so some other differences between this Nirvana and the Rocky Mountain Slayer that I spent some time on last fall and the Slayer has 10 more millimeters of rear travel. Um, and the geometry tends to feel a little bit more consistent. The suspension feels a little bit more firm and supportive for climbing. But the Slayer also felt much heavier. And I haven't weighed this Narvana yet. We'll have that in the written review. Uh, but it doesn't feel as heavy and as cumbersome to pedal up climbs as the Slayer. One thing about the softer mid-stroke too is it's just digging into these berms. 
pushed in super hard and the tire just cracked so well. So I'm going to leave it at that for the review. Thanks for watching. Like I said, we're just leaving it to ride impressions on this one. So if you want the hard numbers, the pricing, the geo, all that stuff, check out the written review on single track. That would be a little bit more analytical while I'm not panting out of breath. If you're not looking at single tracks, then we've got good news, good articles, great reviews up there every day. So check it out, singletracks.com. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't. Enjoy the trails and have a safe quarantine.